Are you ready for the 2023 Maths Challenges? They always like to include the current year in some of the challenge questions, so I've written 10 of my own Maths Challenge questions, including the number 2023, that could easily come up in this year's Intermediate, Junior or Senior Challenges. Now I haven't seen the real papers, so these exact questions probably won't come up, but I bet that something very similar to at least a few of them will, and certainly all of the ideas that they contain come up over and over again in Maths Challenge questions. So the best way to learn maths is to do it. Let's get straight on with the questions. They start with a couple of easier questions that could be in the junior or the intermediate challenges and quickly move on to tougher ones that could be towards the end of the intermediate or somewhere in the senior challenge even. So if you're preparing for any of these challenges, also don't forget that I've got free online courses where you can practice real past paper questions from all of these competitions with my video hints and solutions totally free of charge. So click the link in the description and sign up now. Otherwise, let's get on with my 2023 maths challenge questions. Which of the following is the largest out of these expressions that all contain 2023? Well, the first one, a, 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 3, uh, that's just 7, of course. Uh, 2 plus 0 plus 2 times 3. By bid mass, we have to do the multiplication first, so it's 2 plus 6, uh, which is 8. Uh, in c, we've got 2 minus 0 minus 2 times 3, so it's, uh, again, multiplication first, 2 minus 6 here, that gives us minus 4 could be tripped up by d if you're not careful. 2 times 0 times 2 times 3, it's just 0 because it's something multiplied by 0. And the last one, 2 plus 0 plus 2 to the 3, well 2 to the 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So this is 2 plus 8, which is 10. And so the answer here uh, is e, that's the largest one. I was trying to get the current year 2023 in this one. I was going to ask what's 20% of 23, but it seems harder to ask what's 23% of 20. But the easiest way to do this question is to realise that 23% of 20 is the same as 20% uh, of 23. I mean, 23% of 20 would be 0.23 times 20. 20% 20 of 23 is 0.2 or 0.20 times 23. And you can see that they're the same, uh, same thing here. And they're both 23 uh, times 20 divided by uh, 100, which again gives us another way of doing this. Perhaps you might just do this though by saying 10% of 23 uh, would be uh, 2.3, so 20% uh, would be 2 times that, which is 4.6, and so the answer here is D. It's another maths challenge question that could come up in 2023, because it's got the year 2023 in it, 20 squared minus 23 squared. When you see something of this form, you should immediately think of the famous difference of two squares, sometimes written dots. Uh, formula which says that if I've got a squared minus b squared uh, that's the same thing as a plus b times a minus b. So in this case we've got uh, a is 20 and b is 23 so I've got 20 plus 23 times 20 minus 23. 20 plus 23 is 43. 20 minus 23 is minus 3. When I multiply those together I get minus 129, and so the answer is A. Another question that has the current 2023 year in it, so it could be a 2023 maths challenge question very easily. 23 over 20 minus 20 over 23, and we just got to subtract the fractions here, nothing too difficult. Um, so the common denominator that we'll look for here is just 20 times 23, they don't have anything in common. So here I'm going to have 23 times 23 over 20 times 23 for the first fraction, and I'll want to subtract uh, 20 times 20 over uh, 20 times 23. So that's multiplying the first one top and bottom by 23 and the second one top and bottom by 20. And this gives me 23 squared minus 20 squared over 20 times 23, uh, which is 460. Although you can see all the options have 460 as the denominator, so that was meant to be an easy part. And 23 squared minus 20, that's a famous difference of two squares uh, form a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. So we can just say that this is 23 plus 20 times 23 minus 20 over 460. Uh, so that gives me 43 times 3 over 460. And 43 times 3 is 129. So it's 129 over 460. And so the answer is E. A very common thing in the maths challenge questions. You're not meant to do too much difficult calculation. There are very often these computational tricks that can help you get the answers very efficiently. 
Problems with recurring decimals come up in the intermediate maths challenge all the time, and here's one that could come up in 2023, because it's got the numbers 20 and 23 uh, in it. Uh, really helps if you can write down these recurring decimals quite quickly. So, you know, 8 ninths here is just 0.8 recurring. We might just write 0.888 with some dots for the comparison here. Anything over 9 is just that number recurring, and similarly anything over 99 is the two-digit pattern re recurring, so 85 99 would be 0.858585, etc., which we'd usually write as 0.85 recurring like that, and so uh, 86 99 would be 0.86 recurring, and 87 99 the same with uh, 87 0. 8, 7 recurring and 43 fiftieths multiplying top and bottom by 2 gives 86 over 100 so that would be just 0 0.86 so you can reasonably quickly get all of these written down and then it's just a question of saying well which one is closest to 20 20 thirds I can't think of much better to work out 20 20 thirds than to remember it's a division 20 divided by uh, 23 and then we'll just do the calculation now you can probably guess from seeing all the answers that started on 8 here that 8 times 23 is going to be uh, close to what we want for the first part of the division here, right? So 8 times 23 is uh, 160 uh, plus 24, so it's 184. So I'm going to get 0 0.8 here uh, with 16 left over. And then we can say uh, 6 times 23 is uh, 138. 7 times 23 is 161. So actually... I just get 6 in here with uh, 22 left over and so actually uh, you know this was as much as I could possibly have had left over so we're going to end up with a 9 here and we're going to get 0 0.869 and we can see then that the closest um, of any of these is C, it's actually very very close, 0.8686 um, is far closer than um, any of the others and so the answer there is C. They do love to put the current year in the math challenge questions. So here's one that could come up in 2023. What's the last digit of 2023 to the 2023? If you start working out 2023 times 2023 to get 2023 squared, you soon realize that all that matters to work out the last digit is the last digit of the original numbers, right? I do three times three is nine, and then I could do three times two is six, etc. Uh, but then for the other rows in uh, doing this multiplication I'd put zeros in here so it actually doesn't really matter what comes anywhere else and to get the last digit uh, we just need to know the last digits of the original two numbers that's always true the last digit of a product is the product of the last digits is one way of saying that so 2023 to the 1 ends in a 3 2023 squared ends in a 9 and by the same argument if I do 2023 cubed uh, that's going to end in the same last digit as 9 times 3 does, which is 27, so the last digit is a 7. Uh, 2023 to the 4, well 7 times 3 is 21, that ends in a 1. 2023 to the 5, 1 times 3 is 3, so that will end in a 3. And you can see we've got a repeating pattern here now, 3971, so it's going to go 3971, 3971, uh, and so on. So we just need to know where 2023 to the 2023 will be in this pattern. Well. Uh, it's repeating every 4, so all the multiples of 4 are going to be uh, the same, uh, so 2023 to the 8, to the 12, etc. And uh, 2024 is a multiple of 4, so 2023 to the 2024 will end in a 1, and if I go back 1 to 2023 to the 2023, that will end in a 7, and so the answer to this question is D7. This could easily be an intermediate or a senior maths challenge question in 2023. How many digits does 20 to the 23 have? And we'll start by using our index laws to say, well, 20 to the 23, that's 2 to the 23 times 10 to the 23. So multiplying by 10 to the 23, that just adds 23 zeros to the end uh, of the number, right? So I've definitely got 23 zeros on the end, and I just need to know how many digits 2 to the 23 has, right? Now, uh, 2 to the 10, I've always found is very handy to know is, one, is 1,024, uh, but if you don't know it, you could work out some power of 2 and, uh, and use it to start thinking about what um, 2 to the 23 is. But the fact that 2 to the 10 here is approximately 1,000 is quite helpful, because 2 to the 20, well, that would be 
1024 squared, so I can say, well, that's approximately 1 million. And so 2 to the 23, right, well, that's 8 or 2 cubed times 2 to the 20, so that's 8 times 1024 squared, which is approximately 8 million. And at that point, we can say, well, okay, 8 million has uh, 7 digits, and I've got to add 23 zeros to the end of that, and so the answer here is that 20 to the 23 has 30 digits in total. Now you might be a bit worried about my approximation there, because really what I've shown here is that 20 uh, to the 23 is uh, definitely bigger than this number, but to be really sure, I'd also need to make sure that 2 to the 23 does, definitely doesn't have um, an extra digit, right? Definitely doesn't have eight digits. So I suppose to do that, right, I, I could also say, well, I know 2 to the 10 is less than 1,100, so 2 to the 20 is going to be less than 11 squared, which is 121, with four zeros on the end. And then if I do 2 to the 23, if I multiply that by 8, right, I get 9680000. And so this number, um, okay, it's somewhere between 8 million and 9.68 million. And it's, but it's, the point here is it's definitely not got 8 digits, it's only got 7 digits. For the purpose of a math challenge answer with a multiple choice option, you'd get the marks, obviously, if you just went for D and your intuition said, well, okay, this is quite close to a thousand, so I'm probably fine. But for a really thorough answer, we should double check that at the end. Either way, the answer is D. This is exactly the sort of thing they like to put in the math challenges. Using the current year and needing to know its prime factorization, I would always go into the math challenge knowing what the prime factorization of the current year is and the ones close by it, I think. N and M are both integers here, greater than 1, and with their product is 2023, and I want to know what's the maximum possible value of N plus M. 2023 is a little bit of an awkward year for the factorization. You can check easily that 2, 3, and 5 are not factors, and 7 is a factor, and uh, so you actually get that 2023 is 7 times 289, uh, which is 7 times 17 squared. I'm sure at some point this year uh, that factorization is going to come up in some form or another. What that means is if I'm trying to write it as a product of two numbers that are greater than 1, so I can't do 1 times 2023, so I can rule out option E here, I've either got to do 7 times 289, or I could perhaps do um, 17 times whatever 7 times uh, 17 here is, right? So 17 times uh, 70 plus 49, which is um, 119. So either n and m are 7 and 289, and then I add those together and I would get 296, or they're 17 and 119, and I'd add those together and I'd get 136. The larger of those is 296, and so the answer to this question is C. So which of the following is between the square root of 20 and the square root of 23? Again, could be a 2023 maths challenge question because it's got 2023 in it. The easiest way to do this one, I think, is to use the answers, right? In fact, you can rule out quite a lot of them quite, uh, fairly easily, right? 4 squared, we know, is 16, so uh, the square root of anything bigger than 16 is going to be bigger than 4, so I can rule out A, and 5 squared is 25, so the square root of anything uh, bigger than uh, 25 will be uh, bigger than 5, so again, we want to be between the square root of 20 and the square root of 23, so I can rule out anything less than 4 and bigger than 5. Then it's just a question of which one out of 4.5 and 4.8 works. So if I just do the multiplications here, let's use some tricks to work these out. Why not? This is about the maths challenges. Uh, 45 uh, squared, 45 times 45. We could think of that as 40 plus 5 times 40 plus 5 and use the expansion of a plus b squared here to get 40 times 40 is 1600. I've got two lots of 40 times 5, so two lots of uh, 200 is 400, and 5 times 5 is 25, so that gives me 2025. I bet in 2025 they're going to have a field day with all of the questions they can ask about 45 squared being the current year, 2025 squared. And what about 48 squared? Why didn't we say it's 50 minus 2 times 50 minus 2, so it's 2,500 minus 2 times 2 times 50, uh, so minus 200, and then plus 4. So I get 2,304 for a nice quick way of working that out. Uh, so what we see is that although 4.8 uh, squared is very close to 23, so the square root of 23 is very close to 4.8, uh, 
Route 23 is actually going to be just a little bit bigger than 4.8, and so the only one of these that's in between uh, Route 20 and Route 23 is the uh, 4.5, because uh, you know 20.25 here would be uh, 4.5 squared. Uh, so that is uh, 20.25 is between Route 20 and so it's between 20 and 23. And so the answer here is B. Here we've got two congruent right angle triangles with side lengths 20 and 23 uh, that are as marked. What's the distance from uh, A to B? Again, getting the current year 2023 in any way that I can here to make a question that could easily come up in the 2023 maths challenges. So to work out the distance from uh, A to B, I want the straight line distance. So I've just added this right angled triangle on here and we can see uh, by the symmetries here, we've got this distance here is also 20. Um, and to work out this height here, the length of DC, we can use Pythagoras theorem and say that uh, H squared is 23 squared minus 20 squared. Using the uh, famous difference of two squares formula, we can say that's 23 plus 20 times 23 minus 20. So that's 43 uh, times three, which is uh, 129. So h here is the square root of uh, 129. And dc and be have the same length, so this one is also the square root of 129. So to get uh, ab squared, I'm going to apply Pythagoras to the triangle abe, the red one, and I get that that's uh, 20 plus 20 is 40 uh, squared, plus the square root of 129 uh, squared, uh, and 40 squared is 1,600 and root 129 squared is 129, so I get 1729. So AB must be the square root of that, and so the answer here is C. And for a bonus mark, tell me in the comments why 1729 is a famous number in mathematics.